Good morning. Hope you're all well. I'm hiding upstairs. It's quite noisy in our house today. The joys of two young kids. No, they're doing really well. I'm, I'm finding that um, without words, they, they're showing that they're kind of struggling with everything that's going on as, around us as well. And we need to bear that in mind. Us adults, we kind of get on with stuff. But if you have kids or grandkids or around kids, just bear the mind up in prayer. Bear them in mind because they don't have the words to say when they find stuff hard. And us adults are, are used to going around saying, these are unprecedented times. The world has never seen such. But the kids don't have the words to explain it. So it's really good to remember them in prayer. Lift them up and, and just bring them before God and trust him to help them and look after them because I think they are struggling. Um, anyway, I'm reading today, test everything you hear with God's word. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 20 to 21 says, do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast to what is good. I encourage you to test everything you hear with God's word. I always teach my church to read the Bible for themselves instead of simply swallowing all that any preacher, including myself, says. Be wise and don't just swallow everything. Hook, line and sinker. Fisherman and even his boots. <laughs> Be discerning when you hear something that does not sit well in your spirit, such as when, you're pre uh, when a preacher tells you that God gives you sickness to teach you a lesson. Ask yourself, is this in line with the new covenant of God's grace? Are there new covenant scriptures to back up this teaching? The answer is obvious once you align yourself with Jesus and what he has done for you at the cross. Why would God give you a sickness when Jesus has taken every sickness and disease upon his own body at the cross? With full assurance in your heart that sickness is not from God, you can have faith to be healed. But what assurance can you have if you believe that the lie that the condition is from God? Now though, instead of thinking God is against you, you realize that he is on your side. Your confidence is restored, faith is renewed, and his healing can flow unabated through every cell, tissue, and organ in your body. And we need to remember this doesn't just apply to healing. Whatever you're trusting God for, look in the Bible. The Bible interprets the Bible. And remember to read Old Covenant and New Covenant. Remember where you are. Remember whose you are. And remember what he's already done for you. Whatever you're trusting God for, provision, a job, a family, all these things, friends, health, wisdom, discernment in a situation, Remember, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So look to Jesus. Discern the Bible. Don't look in the old covenant to tell you what you need to know. Look at what Jesus tells us, what he displays, what he shows us, because that's where we live. We can learn definitely from the old covenant. And the whole of the old covenant points to Jesus. But we must look. Now we have the Holy Spirit. Ask him to guide you when you read the Bible. Ask God to speak to you through the word. Let me show you, share with you the words of Miles Coverdale, who said, It shall greatly help thee to understand scripture, if thou mark not only what is spoken or written, but of whom and unto whom, with what words, at what time, where, to what intent, with what circumstance, considering what girth before and what followeth after. Essentially, he was saying that to understand the Bible, we need to read everything in its context. What powerful advice from the man who translated and produced the first English Bible in the 16th century. My friend, rightly divide the covenants whenever you read the Bible and you will never be ashamed. Now that you have received Jesus into your life, you are under the new covenant and it is your new covenant right to enjoy Jesus' unmerited favour to succeed in life. 
It's beautiful, isn't it? Everything in the Bible is written for our benefit, but not everything is written to us. We need to read it in its context. Some were written to non-believers, some were written to Jews, some were written to Gentile believers, to Gentiles, to agnostics. All sorts of people were written to in the Bible. And we can learn from all of the Bible. But not all the Bible was written to us. Some was for Jewish believers. So it's really interesting. We need to, to like the, the person says, the words, they're written to whom, at what time, what goes before, what goes after. So we need to read the Bible. Don't just take a verse out and apply it everywhere. You need to read it in its context. You need to let the Bible interpret the Bible and let Jesus speak to your heart. Remember, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Word is Christ. And when he left, when he arose, risen Christ to heaven, he gave us the Holy Spirit to continue to teach us and guide us. God with us, Emmanuel. Our prayer today Oh, let's do our thought first. It is my new covenant right to enjoy Jesus' unmerited favour to succeed in life. And our prayer today, Father, give me a discerning heart so that when I read my Bible or listen to a sermon, I will know what is of the old covenant and what is of the new covenant. I don't want to be gullible or naive, Father, but I want to be able to recognise what is on your heart for me today and what is merely man's opinion or tradition, so that I may enjoy with confidence your unmerited favour that is based on the truth of your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. That's a really powerful prayer, actually. That's really lovely, because I don't want to be taken in by man's own beliefs or opinions or tradition or religion. I want to know what is God's heart for me today. What his heart is, what he wants me to do. I'm not swayed by man or, or um, instructed just by man, but I want to be instructed and guided by God himself. The best, most blessed assurance that we have is that we have the Holy Spirit who will teach us and guide us. Don't be distracted by things around you. But like this says, ask God for a discerning heart that we will know what's of him and what's of man. So I'm going to take communion now. Um, so if you want to get communion elements, you can pause the video now. Um, if you want to go, that's great and it's lovely. And thank you for joining us today. I'll see you tomorrow. But I'm just going to take communion now and just lift Jesus up because my heart is always to bring Jesus into the center of everything that we do. And this devotional is all about Jesus and his heart for us and what he's done for us, what he's accomplished for us. And it's lovely how he made a way for us 2020 years later to be a part, physically a part, uh, take part in what he did all that time ago. So Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this bread representing your body. Lord Jesus, thank you that you did indeed come for us. You came to save us to the uttermost. You came once and for all. Lord, you came for us individually. You took upon yourself all our sicknesses and all our diseases. The Bible says it. He forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases who redeems your life from destruction and crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Lord, even if we don't see the manifestation of healing in our body, Lord, we believe that you came, that you bore our sickness and disease, and we eat this bread in faith. Lord, we eat it in faith in you. So Lord, we receive our healing through your body broken for us. In Jesus' name, amen.
And Lord, thank you, Lord, that you did come. And you paid the price for our sins, all our sins. Lord, you died on the cross for us. You shed your own blood for us. The perfect blood of the Lamb of Heaven, Son of God. You did it because you love us and you want to restore us to yourself. Thank you that because of your blood, we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Because of your blood, we are protected. Because of your blood, we are forgiven. So Lord, we drink this cup remembering what you did for us in your mighty name. Amen. So Lord, I just pray that you would bless everyone watching today. I pray that today would be a good day, a day close to you, a day wrapped in your arms, safe in your hands and blessed by you. Thank you that you smile on everyone watching this today. In Jesus' name. Amen. So have a good day. Um, dodge the raindrops if it's going to rain. It did rain a lot yesterday. And um, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.